how would you get that love? I'll get all tangled up if I go. <laughs> Two visits in one day. I've brought someone to see you. I asked Patricia to come. Thought she could explain it wasn't Dad's fault that he didn't get home in time. And to let you see everything's above board. Well, if there was some confusion about Susan's message, then I'm to blame. And I'm sorry that it's caused problems between you and David. I know how you must have felt when you lost the baby and he wasn't there. That's enough, Patricia. I want you to believe me, Beryl. There's absolutely nothing between David and I now, and I'm just sorry that your life is in such a mess. Get her out of here, John. Mum, she's here to help. Like hell she is. We both know why you're here. I'm sorry. John, ask me to... Just go. Both of you. I didn't want to upset anybody. It wasn't easy for her to come, you know. I'll talk to you later, Johnny. I never thought that. It's all right. Come on. Why, that scheming, two-faced... John <sighs> believes every word she says. She's just got too many people jumping through her hoops. How could she be so cruel and vicious and still fooling? Years of practice. Well, what did she expect to get out of it? She just couldn't resist gloating. You know, I think we could both use a drink. Come on. I never expected anything like that. Oh, stop worrying. It was worth a try. It was awful for you. I can understand how Beryl feels. Can't be easy for a woman like her to leave behind everything she's had and start all over again. But there was no need for her to do it. Obviously, she doesn't see it that way. She's probably feeling incredibly homesick and determined not to show it. And scared. I know I was. When Gordon and I split up, I had no idea what the future held. Never felt more down and alone in all my life. That's how Beryl's feeling. It's no wonder her behavior's a little neurotic. Well, it was great of you to go. I think it's just a pity that she's making herself and David so miserable when it's so unnecessary. I just wish she'd get it all out of her system and go back to Melbourne, where she belongs. You're terrific, you know that? <laughs> Thanks. Lynn? Yeah? Hope you bought a Boston bun. Well, I did. But I dropped it into your dad on the way home. <laughs> Feel sorry for him having to work Saturdays. I finally got to see that guy, Bates. So awful. You should hear the way he talks to the men. Yeah. Dad reckons he's spitting chips and he can't boss him around anymore. <laughs> it's nice you thought of Dad. You don't mind missing out on the bun? Not when I've got you. <laughs> mm. Mm, I've got things to do. Spoil sport. And you've got your homework. I can see how you're going to be with the poor kid. I wish everything could be all right before the baby's born. With your mum and dad. It'd be beautiful if things were the way they used to be here. At least we can give the old man moral support. Mm. And Boston buns. Hope you bring some of it home. I know he's pleased we're back. How are you doing? You're getting away before the bell, aren't you? Yeah, uh, take the rosters home. So much going on here. Yeah, that's what I want to talk to you about. The roster. I'm on Tuesday off. <laughs> it's too late. Oh, come on, you can fix it for me. Well, you're not much of a mate if you can't, you know. But I'll have a look. I don't think I can swing it now. Oh, of course you can for me. Thanks a lot, mate. <laughs> Kill you on Monday. Hey, listen, hang on off a tick and come down to the pub with the rest of us. I uh, won't have time. Got to get started on these. Especially if I've got to juggle this week's for you. Yeah, well, don't work too hard then, will you, mate? See you around. We're supposed to be giving the orders. You shouldn't bend over backwards to do your mates a favour. I don't want to end up being hated, Bates. I'm sorry I won't be there, but I can congratulate Paul personally. Yes, Hal. Uh, thanks for calling. Bye. Why did you say you couldn't go? 
Oh, I didn't really want to. No need to be stuck in the house on my account. It's just a gathering at Ramberg to give Paul a chance to get to meet all the other board members before he starts there. Well, sounds like he should be there. Patricia will be there. After what happened earlier, there's no way we could be in the same room without the fur flying. Paul's staying at the Hamilton. She's probably conned him too. Yeah. See how it goes. I did say he could make up his own mind, but I get the feeling I'll have to lay it on the line. Wish I'd rung her neck while she was here. Well, in a way, she did me a favour. Hmm? I'm starting to have a few doubts. Of self-pity, really. I'll be damned if I'll have the woman pitying me. Good for you. You show her you're worth a thousand of her. I'm going to. I'm going to stop feeling sorry for myself and damn will make something out of my life. Well, your introduction to the world of big business. I have to admit I'm feeling the odd butterfly. It's only a casual gathering. Well, they'll all be keen to find out what I'm like, what my potential is. Just relax and be yourself and you'll win them over completely. Some of them will probably resent me. Being so young and having it all dropped in my lap. Nonsense. They were devoted to James, and the fact that you were his choice will be more than enough for them. That'll do for a start. Anyway, you've got ours yet. What it really relaxed me most is rolling my sleeves up and doing a bit of work. Well, that is if you don't object to me still working in the garden. <laughs> of course not, if it makes you happy. Besides, Angela's out there. She'll be able to keep you company. Yeah. out of the wind to read, but it's getting a bit cold now. Not if you do some work. Oh, OK. What do you want me to do? Oh, oh well, you can uh, sweep up the grass I've already cut and put it in the barrow. All righty. <laughs> I didn't expect to see you working out here again. I thought it might relax me. Help take my mind off the uh, cocktail party. Oh, you'll be all right. Oh! Must have the shakes. Have you got a clean hanky? Mm. Your turn. <laughs> well, I took the thorn out of your finger. Now you're fixing up my cut. We'll have to stop meeting like this. Good boy. You've been very brave. I'm not as good as I'd like to be. In some things. It isn't easy, is it? They're just friends, but... No. Mother seemed to think it was the best way to deal with the problem, and she's probably right. I suppose so. She's been very understanding. You don't know what a relief it's been to be able to talk to someone, to be completely honest. I don't like having to hide things. Yeah. She's been really terrific. It's taken a bit of the heat off me, too. Knowing she knows and has been so good about it. I'm surprised, you know, why your mum and Fiona don't get on. They're both so nice. Fiona Thompson is a vindictive old... Well, she did everything she could to send us bankrupt. If it hadn't been for your grandfather's money, we, well, we would be. She's been good to me. Well, I'm sorry if she's a friend of yours. That doesn't change my opinion of her. <laughs> Oh, Jill. Hi. It's happening I'd see you. Well, I've got a favour to ask. I did something I thought might get Mum back with Dad, but it only seems I've made things worse. Now I'm on the outer with Mum and Fiona. So? Well, I'm worried about Mum, but it's best if I let things simmer down before I see her again. I was wondering if you could keep an eye on her, let me know how she's going. That's pretty unfair, trying to drag me into it. Well, I'm asking you, is you I looking know at what Mum? you're trying to do and why you're doing it. What do you think this is, another come on? Look, I said I would stay away from you, I'm, and I will. I'm not trying to get around that. I'm just asking for some help as a friend. I am sick of neurotic women. Oh, you've bought a 
a visitor. Do you think I'm neurotic? I, I beg your pardon? John reckons I am. Oh, did he say why? Well, he asked me to do him a favour and I didn't want to. Oh, it doesn't matter. If I am neurotic about him, it's all the more reason for me to get away. Get away? Well, work's having some renovations done to comply with fire regulations. They're closing down for a couple of weeks. I thought I might take a holiday. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, well, I just rang Kevin to say I'm thinking of coming down to Melbourne. He said I might be able to use his sister's place. Oh, well, that'll give you a good time. <laughs> when are you going? Oh, a couple of days. I can't wait to get away from here. And with Mrs Palmer staying here, John's going to be around here all the time. Do you really want me to answer that question about you being neurotic? Mm, I don't know how I got like it. Well, it seems like a holiday would be the best thing for you. You'll come back rested and relaxed with a, a whole new outlook on things. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> oh, talk about rested and relaxed. You look much better. <laughs> how long did I sleep? Oh, a couple of hours. Glad it did you good. <laughs> how are you, Jill? Fine. Uh, uh, Jill's going down to Melbourne for a holiday. Kevin's asked her to stay at Susan's. <laughs> oh, terrific. Give my love to the kids. Yeah, all right. Uh, she'll be seeing David, too, I guess. Yes, I imagine she will. Well, i better get packing. Uh, do you want me to take Plan C for you? Oh, no, I'll let Bunty and Phil have her. They're always wanting to look after her, whether I'm going away or not. <laughs> uh, bye, Mrs Palmer. Bye, Jill. Enjoy yourself, I don't see you before you go. And tell the kids I'm doing fine. Bye. What's wrong? Oh. oh, I worry about her sometimes. She's got onto an independence kick. It's really become a hang-up with her. There are worse hang-ups. I've been independent all my life, and what have I got to show for it? Good friends and people who love you. But nobody who really shares my life. You know what I mean? I've shared my life with someone, and I still ended up with nothing. Jill could have the right idea. Come on. You don't think all those years were thrown away, do you? How did they get me? A husband who ran off and had an affair with that woman the first chance he got. He did come back to you. In a half-hearted sort of way. I'm with Jill. That's great. I'll see you then. <coughs> we'll have a terrific time. Yeah, bye. That was Jill. She's definitely coming. Oh, good. I thought she could stay at your place, Susie. Thanks very much. For bothering to ask me first. I thought you'd be happy to have the company now that we've moved out. I'd like to have been asked how I felt about it first. All oh, right. She can stay here in your old room. But you'll be sorry when she gets here. She's terrific. Oh, it's all right. Please stay with me. Hey, you're a visitor. How about you come into the lounge and have a chat? Well, Lynn's got enough to do. Oh, there then. Oh, that's an offer we can't refuse. <laughs> sure, at least why? I'll do them. You go on. Okay. Hey. <laughs> ah, you are here. You're um, really looking forward to Jill coming, aren't you? I'll say. She gave us such a good time up there. We'll have to try and do the same for her. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I thought Susie would be pleased, too. She doesn't even know her, Kevin. She'll love her when she meets her. I shouldn't have got snappy with Kevin. And you were right. You should have asked first. It's just that I've had a house full of people for so long. It's sort of nice having it to myself for a change. What's up? Hmm? I don't know. You always were such a grown-up sort of person. I think we forget just how young you are. Things have been a bit of a strain lately. I suppose so. First the kids, then your mum. It's been hard on all of us. I knew, though. You copped the brunt of it. I'm all right. Really, I am. It's just... I can't believe Mum leaving us all. I really miss her. She, she's my best friend, you know. Yeah. 
She'll come back, love. Once she's had time to sort things out in her mind. She'll come back. Should have taken the day off and looking a bit pale. Uh, that's after having the weekend off. Shouldn't be trying to cope with a full-time job now. Yeah, I'll have to give it up soon. But I want to hang on to it for as long as I can. I can't stay long or I'll be late. I just wanted to make sure you didn't mind too much about Jill. Kevin should have spoken to you first. Oh, I was just tired. No, everything's fine. She sounds like a nice enough girl. Everything should be great. Yeah, she is nice. You don't like her? Oh, yes, it's just... Oh, I'm being silly. What about? Well, Kevin seems so pleased about her coming down. And you're a bit jealous. Well, not like with Donna. It's just... Well, I'm so big and frumpy and... Whenever Kevin wants to go out and do something, all I want to do is rest. Can't be much fun to be with. Kevin doesn't expect you to be able to keep up with him now. I mean, what are you, eight months? <laughs> Nearly. Well, he never complains, but it must be a drag. He wouldn't want to complain or I'd hit him. <laughs> his baby you're having. No, really, he's terrific with me. I shouldn't have worried at all about Jill coming down. Who knows? She might even have some good news about Mrs. Palmer. <sighs> they could sure do with it. Your copy. Put one up on the notice board? Yeah. Any changes for this week's? No. I think this might mean trouble then. David? Just seen the roster. I'm still down for tomorrow. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mike. I couldn't swing it. Oh, come on, Dave. Look, I can juggle things just so much. Well, you do it for others. Surely you can do it for me. Look, I'm getting further and further behind getting the rosters out because I have to fiddle them to try to help you blokes. I'm not doing it anymore. There are no special favours for anything. Oh, terrific. Sorry. That's the way it is. Looks like a bit of promotion's gone to his head. Yeah. And how you managed to keep quiet for so long, who you really were. But you were dying to tell someone. Well, Fiona knew I could talk to her. Oh. You don't like Fiona? Well, what do you reckon? After she sued Mr. Hamilton, bought up Mumbai and turfed us out, now she's gone ahead with Mr. Hamilton's idea of turning the place into a riding school. Knew just what she was doing all along. Cunning woman, if you ask me. I'll be going. Good luck. Thanks. Morning. Good morning. All ready for the big day? Yep. After the impression you made on Saturday night, I don't think you'll have any worries. Thanks for all the backup you gave me. Oh. John will be going in soon if you don't want to ride the bike. It's okay. I've got somewhere to stop off on the way. Oh. Do you know where Paul's stopping off? Wouldn't have a clue. Beryl's taken herself off into town for the day, window shopping. <laughs> Though why she'd want to buy a window, I really don't know. <laughs> oh, lousy joke. But it is still early for me. <laughs> How did the party go on Saturday? Okay. Thought you would have been there. Oh, Beryl was feeling a bit depressed. I didn't feel like walking out on her. And I told Hal that I could congratulate you personally. Congratulations. <laughs> How did you make out with all the stuffed shirts? Well, they all seem very pleasant. Yeah, they're not a bad bunch, I suppose. Just not really my cup of tea. There, come on in and sit down until that's ready. Patricia was great. She went out of her way to make me feel at ease with everyone. Oh, good. I think she's a tremendous person. Oh. Really? She's... Uh... Obviously, you've done a good job of pulling the wool over your eyes, too. Ah, uh, there's no point in being malicious about her, Fiona. Malicious? <laughs> that sounds very much like some sort of a word Patricia would say about me. She's never said a word against you. I can just imagine. And yet you've been constantly making little digs at her. Maybe that's because I'm a little bit too honest for my own good. Patricia is far more subtle, I know. She seems to me to be very sincere from what I've seen. Oh, rubbish. You just want to like her because she's Angela's mother. I don't see that was very necessary. Sorry. 
I want to tell you about Patricia for your own good. I'm not going to stand back and see her making a fool out of you like she did with James. Oh, I can't see anyone making a fool out of my grandfather. Well, there's no use saying anything, Fiona, because I know how biased you are against her. I know the things you've done to the Hamilton family. And not from her. She's refused to discuss it. Who did you get it from? Angela. I knew she used to be a friend of yours. She's a Hamilton. Whose side did you expect her to see it from? Rosie's not a Hamilton. She doesn't even care much for Patricia. So there's no reason why she'd lie. Seems to me you've taken a real set against the Hamiltons. Patricia has really outdone herself with you, hasn't oh. she? I gave you credit for more sense. Well, don't you come round here singing her praises because I just couldn't stomach that. All right, Fiona. If that's how you want it. I think it might be best if we don't see too much of each other in the future. Well, Patricia and Hal can give me all the business advice I need. Yeah, but Paul... Thank you, you very much for all you've done for me. I do appreciate it. But I think it's time I made my own choices. Mmm, flattering freeze for Fiona, this one. Pat the, Wright, probably, Pat the Rat probably had a hand in that, too. She's pushing Paul and Angela together nicely, which is masterful. She was the epitome of innocence in front of John and Curly, masterful again, and everyone else is jumping through hoops to run Fiona down on her behalf. She is masterful. And do you think Batesy is going to be the Pat the Rat of Melbourne? He was a bit devious today as well. Graham Bailey has noticed that the set dresser on this last week was Gordon Brown, who, of course, went on to be charged of the Exchequer is his next career move. And I had to laugh when I got a letter addressed to Judy Mensel after the bank holiday. No, Claire from Bristol, she does continuity on SAD. I do continuity announcing. An honest mistake, or were you taking the you-know-what? More on Monday at half-past one.